We've talked about local max and min values or relative maxima and minima values. Here we're going to talk about absolute maximum and minimum values. So let's start by talking about what those are. The highest y value of a graph is called its absolute maximum. The lowest y value of a graph is called the absolute minimum. One thing I'd like to point out here about this definition, notice we're talking about the y value. So when I talk about the absolute maximum, I'm always referring to a y value of the graph. Same thing with an absolute minimum. If I ever refer to that, I'm really referring to its y value. We might also include its x value uh, as well, but really it's the y value that we're really interested in. And first we want to talk about, well, how, in, in one instance, will I have absolute extrema? Because you won't always have an absolute extreme value. You may, you may not always have an absolute maximum or an absolute minimum. So here we have this theorem. It's called the extreme value theorem. It says a function f that is continuous on a closed interval a to b has both an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum on that closed interval a to b. And to see why this is, I'm going to go ahead and draw a couple pictures here of functions that perhaps don't meet these criteria. So for example, I'm going to start with something which is not continuous. So if I work with something which is not continuous, let's say I have a vertical asymptote right here and okay we'll work on this closed interval if I was to look at something like this there is no highest y value or lowest y value because we have this vertical asymptote here there's no highest y value because the graph just keeps increasing and increasing and increasing just keeps going up and up and up forever and ever and ever so uh, there is no highest y value. If you ever think you have a highest y value, you, maybe you say, okay, that's the highest y value. And then I'm going to say, well, what if we go a little bit closer to the right here, and a little bit closer to the right, and a little bit closer to the right, and we can keep getting closer and closer to that, that asymptote, and our y values will continue to increase and increase. Same idea for the absolute minimum here. The uh, Fun or excuse me, the limit as we approach that vertical asymptote from the right hand side, um, this time we're just decreasing infinitely. So if you think you find the lowest point, you can always get a little bit closer to that asymptote and we will um, we'll have a point that's lower. So okay, that's why it needs to be continuous. What about this closed interval stuff right here? Let's talk about that. So let's say I have a function that is on an open interval. So let's say I have a function which is on an open interval. Perhaps it looks something like this. So here in this case, I have two local extrema. I have a local maximum right here and a local minimum right here. But that's not what I'm really interested in. I want to know what is the highest y value and the lowest y value. You would want to say that the highest y value is occurring right here, but it doesn't include its endpoint right there. We have a hole. Right now, if you were to talk about, if, if you said, okay, this is A and this is B, you're on the open interval A to B we don't include the endpoints. So I would probably want to say, okay, at this point right here, that's my highest point, but I, I, I can't pick that value because the, the graph or our function doesn't exist there. The problem that we're going to have is the almost the exact same problem we had with the asymptote. I'm going to pick a point right here, let's say, and I'll say, okay, well, I think that's the highest point. And then someone else might come along and say, okay, well, what about this point right here? And now it's a little bit difficult to see because we're bound by the limitations of technology here. But if I were to take this piece right here and zoom in further, so okay, let's say maybe the first red dot I put right here, the second red dot I put right here, and I can still get closer than this second red dot. I can say, okay, well, what about all the way up to here? And then again, I'm, I'm bound by 
technology once more. So I'll say, okay, I have to take this and zoom in even further. We, we end up with this idea of we can zoom in infinitely. We can get infinitely close to this open circle. So it's a little bit more difficult to see, I think, in this case, but we have no highest Y value. If you pick a highest Y value, I can always get a little bit closer to that hole and that will produce a higher Y value. Same exact problem we're going to run into with the absolute minimum here. You can just get a little bit closer to that hole every single time and we'll find a, a Y value that's lower there. So this has no absolute maximum and no absolute minimum. Now that's not to say that you couldn't have um, you couldn't have a function which is perhaps either discontinuous or on an open interval that still has an absolute max or an absolute min, but this is a way to guarantee the existence of absolute extrema. So we know, okay, we, we need to have a continuous function on a closed interval. That's the way to guarantee uh, absolute extrema. Now we should think about, okay, well, how do I find those? Where are they located? So I'm gonna draw in a few graphs right here before I tell you where that is. Whoops. Before I tell you where this these occur. So let's say I have a function that looks something like this. So similar to the last example that we just looked at. Only this time I have a closed interval. Here I would say, well, this is my lowest y value. This point right here, whatever that y value is, that is my absolute minimum. This is my highest y value, so this must be my absolute maximum. These two points right here, those are a high point and a low point respectively, so here's a high point and here's a low point. But notice I said a high point and a low point. It's not the highest point or the lowest point. These are local max and min values, so local max and a local min. They're still important, but they're not the highest y value on your graph. So okay, we can have absolute extrema occur at the endpoints. Let me draw a different function this time. Let's say I have something that looks, oh, let's, oops, let's draw this in in blue, something like this. Here in this case, okay, again, we're going to want to identify what's the highest y value, what's the lowest y value. In this case, kind of the vertex of this parabola-like shape here, this is my absolute maximum, but even more than that, it's also a local maximum. So it is both a local and an absolute maximum. It's an absolute maximum on this closed interval or I could have the, uh, excuse me, if I wanna talk about the uh, absolute minimum, I'm gonna pick out the lowest Y value, which is this point right here. This is my absolute minimum. That is the lowest Y value. Let's look at one more quick example here. Let's draw something that looks maybe something like this. So again, I wanna pick out the highest Y value and the lowest Y value. Highest Y value looks like it occurs right here. Here I have an absolute maximum. Um, and then the lowest Y value I see is this corner right here. You might be a little bit worried because the function's not differentiable there. But for right now, I don't care whether or not my function's differentiable. All I care is, uh, does my function exist at that lowest y value? Yes, it does. Um, the function existing is different than saying it's not differentiable. So here the function does exist, so this is my absolute minimum. It's also in, in this case a local minimum as well. It's a local and absolute minimum. So looking at these three cases, hopefully we're starting to see a pattern of where these local extreme values occur. We've seen them occur pretty often 
at the endpoints, and let me just re-highlight these, we've seen those occur pretty often at the endpoints of our interval. That seems to be a pretty common place where we might have our absolute maximum and our absolute minimum. We could have that, or they might occur at local extreme values, so at critical points. So here we have local extreme values. That's where I have um, these two absolute extreme values. And this is, in fact, where these absolute extrema must occur. If we have absolute extrema, it says if they exist, because remember, it's not always guaranteed that we will have an absolute maximum or an absolute minimum. If they exist, they must occur at either critical numbers, so this is my first possibility, or at the endpoints of a closed interval. That's my second possibility. So this is nice. It kind of narrows down the possibility. It sort of narrows down the places um, the places that these uh, could occur. We, we know we're going to look at really just two possibilities, critical numbers and endpoints of our interval.